So the um, release is all dry, but I actually forgot to do a step and I keep on doing this because I get all excited and not thinking what I'm doing. Um, so basically what I should have done is before I apply the release agent, I just got to be a little bit careful, is um, I should have just drilled out these, the pinholes um, for the dials. Um, and these are what we're going to use to locate the two halves. Um, so when I print these, I print them at um, probably about a quarter of a mil undersized. Um, so I actually um, need to open them up a bit um, to get the, um, the pins to, to fit. Now, because I've only printed with um, two layers, um, two shells as it were, um, there's not a lot of material on the, around, the, around the holes, on the inside of the holes. And with some, you can actually see, it hasn't actually... Um, uh, hopefully you can see this now. Okay, so right in, right in here, you can see where it hasn't actually um, caught the top. Um, because the infill was quite big on, on it, I think I said 10%. Um, and you may recall that I was um, talking about that perhaps around um, the um, bottom area here, I need to increase the infill. And ideally I need to do the same around the holes, uh, but probably a better um, solution for it would be to actually have these as individual printed items. Um, the holes, still as part of the model, but in the slice I have them as individual parts and then I can actually print them solid, um, all part of the same part. Um, bit complicated to explain, but um, at least then I'll be able to get the best of you know, all worlds basically with the, the print times. So a lot of the, these problems are caused by um, me not having enough outer shells on. And the reason why I'm not putting enough outer shells on is because of the print time basically. Um, so I've, at the moment I'm doing it with two shells and that's it's a bare minimum. Um, yeah, I don't think you could get away with this with one shell. But at the moment it's two shells. Um, ideally, um, you'd probably want four shells to be brilliant. But um, if you think that this part of the mold probably took uh, probably 16 hours to print, um, you could probably add another 25% of the time onto that for another two shells, um, maybe maybe a bit more. So um, yeah, so it's, it swings and roundabouts. So when we when I'm opening up these holes now, I just need to be a bit careful, I'm not go too crazy. Um, I haven't had any serious problems um, yet, um, but I expect if I, was, if I was casting a lot of these, um, these holes might wear a, a bit. But what I'm really interested in doing is having probably a good time to talk about the pins really. Um, now these pins basically salvage from a printer so now when you throw out your um, laser printer or printer uh, before you throw it away strip it because there's so much good stuff inside that um, bearings bushes and it's a really good source of um, decent um, rod um, a bit hard to cut um, so you need to like cut with a grinder so I use a dremel with a grinding stone on it to cut it and that cuts it fine if you try with a hacksaw or some of the, some of the hardened rods you know you just Chew up the um, teeth in your hacksaw, um, and the only other thing is I do is I just put I just grind a chamfer on the on the top there with a sander or whatever you got whatever you got knocking around, just so that when this when this comes down, hopefully you can see I'll go the upside down. It just locates and just gets it started um, to locate in the hole. Um, that's all that chamfer there is for. Um, and basically, I cut these. So ideally, I'm looking for only. Um, only probably about oh, let's try to get a decent view on that. Um, probably about four or five mil poking through. So I'm not really looking for these pins to run all the way through the two the two parts. I just want it, want them to locate, so it squares up and locates perfectly on the. Um, oh, you can't see that. So it sort of squares up and locates perfectly the two parts together. Um, and also bear in mind that I eyeballed this joint here. So there might be some shift, uh, but I haven't had any problems as yet, that's what, um, with that. Um, so yeah, um, so all I've got is a 6mm drill bit, um, nothing special there. And you can either do these by hand, okay, just take your time really. Um, and the, the plastic cuts pretty clear, pretty easily. Um, it's not a big issue really, just let the, 
to drill this take its own path really. Um, or if you're steady with a um, drill, um, cordless drill or whatever you've got knocking around, just use that. Some my preferred method, it's just a bit quicker, it just needs to be a bit steady. And like I say, you haven't got much material around the sides there, so um, just take care um, when there's not a lot of shells. So we're just gonna, I'm just going to drill through these gently. But if you just have a, a low speed um, and just let the, the drill do the work, let it go through. So you're not pushing, you just let the, you know, you sort of let the drill do, do the work, do the cutting. Once it's through, and out. And then the last thing to do is just check that your pin will fit in, um, fit in through. And you're looking for it just to be a push fit. Um, and that's fine, that's, that's exactly what I'm after. Now, the reason why I've gone for um, sort of pegs like this is because um, when, when the two parts are clamped together, um, I want to remove the pegs completely out the way. So if I just push that peg out now. So imagine it's it's clamped together and you're um, and you're going to remove your cast part. Um, because the cast part is so fragile, um, when I say fragile, it's fragile when it's in the mould because it's very easy for it to catch and you're pushing and pulling, you're putting quite a lot of force on it and then you you crack it. Um, once it's out of the mould, it's, it's different, you know what I mean? But, um, so um, all I do is, what this allows me to do is it allows me to push the pins completely out before I start trying to get the two parts of the mould to split. Um, and that way, when I'm, when I'm lifting it up, I'm not worrying about the catching on the, on the pins, so I prefer to take the pins out completely. I know um, so traditionally moulds, you'd have those actually permanently fixed in there. Um, and I haven't actually tried that, um, because I like the idea of just having be able to remove these pins um, when I'm, I'm splitting the mould. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to fly around with the drill and um, just open up all those holes and check them and then I'll, I'll be back in a sec. Um, yeah, not the cleverest thing doing it after I've prepped the moulds, um, but anyway, um, go away with it. Um, so, um, the orientation of the, the pins as well, uh, what I've been doing is uh, putting the pins into the core part of the mould, um, rather than to the cavity part of the mould, to start off with the, the pins will be in um, this part of the mould. And the reason for that is um, this is the part of the mould I, I pour into. So I actually pour into this part of the mould and then um, I pour the um, foam into this area, make sure it's all where I need it to be. And then that's on the board and I add that on top. Um, I add the um, cavity part of the mould on top. <sighs> Bugger. Bits of plastic everywhere now. Not clever at all. So, um, so that's um, ready. and then the next thing to do is obviously you know dry fit this stuff. Um, don't go and pour your your mold, <laughs> your foam out, and then try and clamp it and find oh god I can't uh, get these pieces to uh, line up. Um, so yeah, just um, obviously um, dry fit it all. Looks like there's a pin slightly askew here. Oh, something's broken. Oh, look at that forced it. I forced it and broke it. Oh, what a killer. What a bugger. See, so you can see it's actually um, misaligned there ever so slightly. Um, oh, what a bugger. They me saying how, how good it was eyeballing it all up and I've just gone and cut it. Um, <laughs> so what, what we'll need to do is repair that. Um, and I've actually, I've actually used, um, laid them with only three pins. So technically speaking, you probably only need three points, maybe even two points. Um, but I've been using four, and that seems to be working okay. But as you can see there, I've just cocked that up um, completely by forcing it. And luckily, it's on the core part, the cap, sorry, the core part of the, the uh, mould. So uh, no one's going to see that. And what we'll do is... We shall uh, pop some super glue in there, I think. 
yeah, pop some super glue in there um, and held it and then I'll, I'll do a weld repair on the back. So, oh, you get to do some more welding. That's a bugger, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, right, let's see if I can cock up the next piece. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? Okay, don't force it. It ain't gonna fit, it ain't gonna fit, Stephen. Don't force it. What a plonker. Pins are slightly too long as well, so I don't think that helps much. Okay, I'm just going to let it go where it wants to go. Let's see if we can get that. Okay, so those are all gone in except for this one here. So it might just be where it's warped a little bit. So it's just this top pin that's slightly out. Um, so we've got three pins that fit in. Oh, what a bugger! Um, I'm just going to run the, the drill bit through there by hand. Oh, you can see it's slightly offset. It's, it's ever so slightly offset. I don't want to force it, so I'm just going to run the draw bit through that by hand. It's ever so slightly. Look, oh, that's going in. Easy peasy. Why well, didn't I do this with the other one? <laughs> oh, what a plonker. Anyway, here we go. That should fit perfectly. There you go. So, that's a nice dry fit. Have a look around our parting plane. It looks really good actually. Um, so what we do, I'll show you now what we do, is um, when that's cast, when it's, um, when we've poured it and we've dropped the top on, then what I do is I pop it in between two pieces of MDF and clamp it. Yeah, so any of the any of the gaps there actually pull up nicely, it pulls up everything square. And the way I design the mould is that these two surfaces are parallel to each other. So when I when I wang up the clamps, yeah, it's gonna put it all straight and true. Right, okay, so I need to do some repairing. Or what I could do is cast this one now and while this one is curing we could repair the other one what do you reckon I reckon that's what we should do okay give me five minutes to go in together and then we'll pick up again